beautiful herpes of the world is in a queen nightmare. And it is... <laughs> what time now? It is 12.46am on the day of the live stream. And I'm going to do a... <clears throat> Contrary fan fiction reading. This is the eighth part. I'm sorry, I called it I called um the last one six because I lost my mind and we all go crazy sometimes, don't we? Uh it is going to be You Are My Sunshine. Chapter four A Fist Collapse collided with the cold tile of the wall in the of the boys' bathroom. Harry sw- swore under his breath and punching the wall repeatedly. There was a sick, crunching noise, and his hand was broken. He let out a gasp of breath and closed his eyes, biting his lip. He, crawled, he coddled his hand in the in his chest and slid down the wall the cold water cascading down his body he clutched his hand and banged his head against the wall feeling sick all over again he had totally lost control over his body tonight he had totally fucked everything up he supp- he was supposed to to make malfoy squeam in his squirm in his seat like he did to him but harry harry let his emotions get the best of him damn it malfoy didn't do any anything he just sat there run his hand through his hair and rubbed a hand over his eyes and that's it but no harry's heart didn't quite agree with his mind and the other parts either Harry stifled a sob, and he remembered Malfoy's face. He did. He had been scared because he thought that Harry was going to... He didn't know what he was going to do. But the look on Malfoy's face left a hole in Harry's heart. He could text him right now and get informed how how was his day so far. But his finger didn't, didn't move. He he himself didn't move at all. He was ashamed of himself for what he had done. Aroused by Malfoy? Harry shook his head to tear tear um a tear ran down his ran down his his eyes. He bit his lip lips more tightly, but wanting to cry over this he remembered the day when he told hermione that he was feeling some kind of weird stuff towards a male male population of hogwarts hermione only looked at him like he she was amused by his stu- um stuttering de- declaration i i think that's shocking but And she she just hugged him close to her as she saw his dejected and anxious face and told him that he didn't have to worry about it and that his secret was safe with her. Harry spilled his heart out. He told her all that whom he, he found attractive or with whom he liked to have a relationship. He told her about how he found Malfoy and his sarcastic side cute. And Hermione's face was priceless. She opened her mouth. She had her. Oh, um. She held. She had her mouth wide open. Eyes going wide. Trying to speak. But when the words failed. uh, But when the world. uh, Words failed her. She just snapped her mouth shut and looked at Harry like he had grown a head, a head or two. After that, this, this happened, this mess that Harry dug himself into. How could he be so stupid? How could he be? <sighs> Harry shook his head again and looked down at his hard cock. 
which was nestled under his thigh. He looked at it in disgust and felt anger rising inside him once again. It was that that piece of meat. Please don't call it a piece of meat. Oh, good grief. Oh, okay. Because actual people from Korea, bull penis is actual um, meal to them. That's a delicacy. Please don't call your, your penis meat. Never. I will never get that out of my head. <laughs> okay. That he let him lose his mind. And now it sat there looking flushed and hard. Harry swearing heavily. He took him into his other hand and roughly brought his himself into the edge. He came his his, his vision turned white and shockingly blonde boy's face appeared under his closed eyelids. The next morning was tense. Harry sat at the Gryffindor table looking exhausted and not so fresh, like he didn't sleep a blank, which he didn't. When he tried to sleep, he found himself thinking about Malfoy. Once he he had done, um, once, mm, once again, he cried of humiliation of what he had done. He tried to stifle his sobs as best as he could, but when Ron flat flung open the curtain of his bed, he let out a wail and buried his face into his com- his pillow, crying almost hysterically. Ron looked slightly scared and not knowing what to do, called Hermione up to their room. When Hermione appeared, a worried look was on her face. As she approached to his bed, his bed, she tried to see his face, and when she saw it, she understood what happened. She so she only gave him a sad smile and rubbed a hand on his back, but saying nothing. Ron had asked what happened to him. Hermione only told him that doesn't that maybe it was because of the war that was looming over them taking its toll on Harry. Ron only nodded and walked out of the dormitory, feeling unsettled by Harry's behavior. Wow, what a rude friend. My goodness. Oh, whoops. Been safely closed. Um, when the door had been safely closed, after Ron, Hermione put up a silencing charm on it and gathered Harry uh, into her arms, gently running her a hand on his head and waiting for him to tell of what had happened. And Harry did. Once again, he told Hermione everything. That he had uh, that had happened between them about the galleon they are using, but Malthwain unknowingly talking to him, and every passing minute the ache in his heart lessening, lessened, and finally after some more crying he fell into a very uneasy sleep. Hermione waved her wand at Harry's cr- um crooked head hand and a sharp click his hand was back to normal now here they were sitting together not saying anything suddenly Hermione took Harry's hand in hers and she went all tense Harry feeling puzzled frowned looked at Hermione questioningly but she but saw her looking towards the door of the great hall Harry turned and looked at the point of where she she was looking and froze. His breath left him left him and his eyes burned with tears again. 
He idly um, wondered how much he could cry. Ma Foy swaggered in looking. Harry blinked. Shit. He looked like shit. That's what he felt he looked like. As it seemed like Harry wasn't the only one who had, hadn't slept last night. He turned a horrified look towards Hermione, who tightened her grip on him. She shook her head and leaned closer. You are not going anywhere, Harry. You'll make it even worse if you'll just take, just take and leave. Harry, after a moment of silence, nodded. His lower lip wobbled a bit, and he bit it hard, thudding his head forward onto the table and trying hard to stifle the noise that were make coming out of his lips. Potter looked like hell. He, he himself didn't look good. But it wasn't because he was distressed. It was because he was happy. Happy? Was that the word he had used now to describe the butterflies that flying inside his gut? He didn't know what he was feeling. Because he never felt like this. And he wanted it to last as long as it could. What Potter did not did to him yesterday was beyond madness. He had been waiting for that for his whole life. He had been waiting for Potter to do something risky so he wouldn't be the first one to make the first move. He hadn't slept last night because he because his mind was a ju jumbled mess. Was a jumbled mess. He was once in a life happy about a small thing. Since he started at Hogwarts, he didn't know what true happiness was. What things would make a human being be happy? Yes. He had received small gifts, and sure, when he was little, but all ended up with a slap or two on, on his face from his father from being overly excited about a toy broomstick that he, he'd got as a, f a gift for his fifth birthday. His father had been abusive, but everything that he'd learned, he'd done to him, Draco had learned from it. He learned that happiness was sweet, as it was, it, as it was, didn't last forever. And Draco believed him. He still does. He sighed and rubbed a hand on his face. He looked at to see Potter banging his head on the table and that Granger was trying to talk to him but to no avail he watched that as Granger Granger's hand was rubbing Potter's back and Draco had had a sudden urge to rip her hand off off of its socket so it won't ever touch Potter Draco took a deep breath deep steadying breath he scolded himself for losing control of his mind and emotions. He and Potter were nothing together. They were enemies. And he was... He was his emotions. Getting the best of him wanting nothing more than a rip ranger to pieces. The mystery boy was mysteriously gone. They hadn't talked for from yesterday evening till now it was surprisingly real uh, surprising really they'd be they'd at least say good night to each other even though they hadn't talked <clears throat> draco rummaged in his pocket and took out the galleon and tapped it 
morning, are you all right? Draco was waiting for a reply, but his waiting reply did not come. He was in a, he, he was in a foul mood by the time the class the classes ended, and with a groan he realized he had to write an essay with Potter, but the git hadn't written him, and Draco hadn't didn't know what to do. What if he was too embarrassed of himself to write Draco about it? He wouldn't allow it, of course. They had to write the fucking essay. When then start to brew the damned potion at the next class. They had to work together, for goodness sakes. What was Potter playing at? Draco care, um, cared, <laughs> cared about his mark, unlike the idiot. Squishing down his pride, he fetched Felix, his owl, and wrote a note on it for Potter. His black owl took off immediately, and Draco silently, tiredly slumped in his bed, looking out the window. He, it was a beautiful day outside. He thought idly the sunset was beautiful, as it ever could be. He sat there for a moment and drank the scene in the scene, which was unfolding right in front of him. The sky was a mixed color of red, purple, and orange. At the horizon, he could see the tail, tell signs. of the ever-present sun, which was peering through the clouds. Draco sighed and frowned. He sounded like a damned romantic idiot, sitting in his bed and watching the sunset. Really, Malfoy? <sighs> Draco shook his head and stood up, stretching. He padded towards his ro- wardrobe, and started to dress manic mechanically. He had to meet Potter in the library in 30 minutes. Draco thought how their study was going to end up with this time. He hoped that Potter wouldn't lose control this time to shove him up against the wall and punch his face. He'd rather Potter shove him against the wall and ravish and be ravished by him. Drago shook his head and slapped a hand on his face, making him to cringe at as the slap was too harsh. He... He pursed his lips at his own stupidity and walked out of his dormitory, taking some notes and books that he left in the common room. He turned around, took two apples from the bowl, and sauntered out of the room, walking up the stairs, taking t- taking some turns into secret passages to let him get to the seventh floor as soon as he could. And he w- and ta- walking towards the library. When he was right in front of it, of the, the closed doors, the library he took two steady, steady, br- steadying breathing breath, and opened it. Walking in, he realized that there weren't that much, much many people there. Some Ravenclaws for late night studying, and and such. He walked right at the back of the library, placing his books on the table. He turned around, around himself and saw that the corner he had occupied was closed for all um, from all sides but but by bookshelves and no one from the other side would see him Draco smirked slightly and sat 
at the comfortable chair and took one of his books and sat, started to read. Occasionally j- jotting down a sentence or two. Didn't know you were left-handed, a meek voice interrupted his deep thoughts. Making him a yelp and, and jump a foot, feeling slightly embarrassed by his behavior, he felt his cheeks color as he saw Potter casually leaning against one of the shelves. Fog Potter, he said, and rubbed a hand on his chest. You scare the block out of me. Sorry. Potter muttered and walked towards the table, sitting opposite of Draco. Draco. Huh? Um. I left my place, sorry. Draco, scowling furiously, nodded. How did you find me? Though his heart was running a mile a second, mile a minute, his his voice was steady. He congratulated him for making himself to make to take control of himself, unlike this morning. A handy spell, which is called point me. Potter said Potter, his voice lacing with a slight sarcasm, which Draco never thought that. Potter was capable of. Oh, do shut up. Snapped Draco. To cover up his discomfort, he had acted completely stupid. When he saw Potter there, he leaning on the bookshelf, his hair tousled, looking all delicious in his non-school clothes. Start reading the damn books and leave me alone, he snapped again turned back to his book and notes. He heard Potter sigh and flip open the book. They fell into silence. (coughs) Weird. Halfway through the research and more writing, he heard Potter standing up and walking to one of the shelves. Draco called a looked up and watched how Potter lifted his head up to grab one of the books that he couldn't quite reach. He watched as Potter's back muscles flexed, and Draco held the quill in his hand more tightly to the point that it snapped. He swore under his breath, and and with a wave of his wand, he cleaned up the mess. He looked at Potter once again and saw him still trying to get the book down. It's now or never. Draco uh, silently stood up, being a head taller than Potter. He had an upper hand to th- in this situation. So he crept behind Potter and he bit his lip, thinking of what he was going to do. What if Potter's actions not in the right way? What if Potter hexed him into the next week? He mentally shook his head and stretched out his hand to the point where Potter's book was, his body closing it on on um, Potter's body. Did I call him Peter? Did I? I don't think I did. I don't know. Um, Draco heard him gasp in the breath and felt a thrill run down his body. Is this the book you wanted? Draco asked him, making sure his voice tickled the side of Potter's ear. He felt Potter shudder lightly and nodded in agreement. Draco smirked when he saw Potter's trum- trembling hand grab the book that he was holding in, in front of him.
Potter slowly turned around, and Draco's smirk flattered Potter's green eyes. Faltered, Potter's green eyes were filled with raw heat that made Draco want to groan and just take him into his arms and ravish him. They were standing so close that Draco could feel his heat raging under his breath, his eyes f- flat, um, fluttered, um, fluttered shut, and he breathed slowly. Whoa. <clears throat> slowly. making sure not to just shove him against the damned shelf and take him right now. And then he slowly opened his eyes and saw Potter was watching his lips. A tongue darted out and licked his lips. Potter took a shuddering breath in. Well, guys, I am going to leave it there. And then that's all for this this one. But I'm going to do a live stream on YouTube. So you got to be ready, okay? Ready, ready, ready. I love you guys so much. Bye-bye. And also give my subscribe button some love. And give people... <clears throat> if you want to see me on my live stream, go like... Tell people about it. Spread the word. We all, um, I have some friends coming on my live stream, so don't you worry about it. Um, and I will do another video of explaining what the live stream does. I love you guys so much. Remember not to bully everyone else, bully someone else that likes my channel or doesn't like my channel. We all have feelings here. I love you guys so much.